Hey everybody, welcome back. This is render phone number uh, for skeletons of module two, and this is gonna be part one, where we're gonna go over a little bit of object-oriented programming in JavaScript. <clears throat> so, um, definitely read through this, but you're going to wanna keep in mind that this is not part of the interview, so optional is the name of the, word, of the game today. Commonly used example for object-oriented programming is creating virtual cars, mainly because uh, it does speak to the idea of having a single constructor instance function class, um, a way for us to repeatedly create similar objects with a lot of default parameters. Um, so one of the things that we're going to do is this is a function, a uh, constructor function, and you'll typically see these with capital letters. Um, for everybody who is curious about why you're learning about this and not classes, it's because JavaScript has been written for a long time. And so the odds of you're coming across something that uses a constructor function is not negligible. Eventually you'll find out that there have been newer advances made to the JavaScript language, which kind of makes this not obsolete, but at least not necessarily the first choice for a new project. However, you're not always gonna be working on a new project. Oftentimes you'll be working on legacy code and your ability to understand what's going on here will make you more of a dynamic programmer. Uh, so this is a constructor function. We're gonna use it to create new instances of our car. Excellent. Below are methods that we have attached to the car's prototype chain. So what's the prototype chain? Mm, not as important as there is a thing called the prototype chain and we're gonna show you how it works. So here are two methods attached to the prototype chain. One is a function that affects this.gas minus equals one, which can be kind of confusing to parse. Car.prototype.paintjob is equal to a function of a color. This.color is equal to color. So for now, let's just grab this and make sure that we have our comments there. And we're gonna pop it in there. So we've got a constructor function and we've attached two methods to the prototype chain for that, uh, what do you call that? For that constructor instance, for that function, something. Basically for the car, we're going to have two methods we've attached to the prototype. So in order to make use of this set of code, we have to create a new instance of our car. Below is a demonstration using the new keyword to generate a new instance of our constructor car function. So let's grab this, bring it over to our REPL. Now we can generate a new instance of the car using the constructor function as follows. So we'll say variable my car is equal to new car. And this is the function that we're calling. And putting new here actually does something kind of cool. We pass in two arguments, blue for color and sedan for type. And then now we're gonna console.log my car a little label next to it and whatever my car is. So let's just see, have a look. So my car is a car and it has a color of blue, a type sedan and a gas 12. Uh, so cool. So here's the, here's the cool part. When we say new car, what's happening inside the constructor function is essentially this. We have a variable this, which is a context object and it's relatively complicated and it gets created implicitly and then also returned implicitly. So essentially what we've done is we've created this object and then assigned it to whatever we uh, called new car next to. So my car now basically receives this, this object, which is the car, but it's a context object for the car. So this is one of those where uh, explanation doesn't tend to do a lot. Playing with examples tends to, <clears throat> excuse me, make it much easier to understand what's going on here. So if we picture that that's happening, something very implicitly is this is an object, and then we're going to implicitly again return this. We can consider that this is then essentially this car object with a color uh, blue, a type of sedan, and gas with a value of 12. So uh, once we have that, you want to consider that what we also have are these prototype methods. So we have a car uh, a method called drive and a method called paint job. And by saying car.prototype.drive and car.prototype.paintjob, what we're essentially doing is we're assigning to a place where every car can look a method that that car can use without actually having that car, how do you say this, personally contain that method. So we didn't attach any methods inside of the car function or the car object that gets returned from that function, but we're giving every single car that gets created an automatic kind of like repository or bucket to keep all of the methods for all cars so that we don't have to rewrite all of the things that a car can do for every car instance. We put some things that are specific to that car in the instance, but then put things that are relatively um, reusable for any car 
into its own prototype. So that makes the objects less heavy. Um, <clears throat> the biggest question that always comes up for this is why? Why are you doing this? And that's one of those where once you start realizing how many different things you can do with programming and how many different places JavaScript has been used and how many different ways this pattern that we've described here has been instantiated in JavaScript, the why becomes just about the most complicated question you could answer. What you're doing, again, as a beginner developer, is making yourself familiar with the different types of uh, use cases and, let's say, methods that are available for this kind of software development pattern. So, if we come back over here, mycar.drive, and then we're going to console.log mycar afterwards. So, right now we have mycar, and... Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to recreate all this each time we run it. It's going to log the car to the console, and then we're going to come down here and hit drive. So we're going to call drive for my car. Now my car, if you remember, it doesn't have anything called drive in here. There is no method that's attached to this. But if we remember, it's going to find it on the prototype, and that's kind of just sort of built into the language. So if we hit run here, we'll see my car, color blue, type sedan, gas 12. My car after driving once, the car now has a guess of 11. So it accesses that by this. So it says this dot guess, which means that when we call my car dot drive, this is referring to my car. Now, it is more complicated than that. And this actually has a, the, the keyword, this, has a bunch of other applications besides what we're using for it here. But this is one of those. Now, if we think about it, we could also change the color of the car. So we'll say my car dot paint job. Paint job is a method and we want to change the color of our car to silver. Why not? And then we're going to console.log my car and we'll say after paint job. So if we run that one, we'll see what we saw previously and then we'll also see that after the paint job, the color has now been changed to silver. So that's pretty much it for this half of the lesson we're now going to extend this principle towards something called a phone number formatter. And it's a contrived example. You do want to be sure that what we're doing could be done easily in other ways, and more difficultly, in other ways, to be sure. However, getting used to the patterns and exposure to them is something that can be very, very useful at this point in your development career. So if you feel like going through this exercise, cool. If not, definitely feel free to skip to find longest palindrome. You do want to remember that this will not be on the interview, but will come up in the immersive later. So with that, thanks for watching. We're going to finish up the second half of this in the next video. Hope you're enjoying this, and we'll see you in the next video.